Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. My name is Amy with two E's and I am the CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my podcast and programs, I teach women just like you how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. Welcome back to the podcast. This is going to be episode 207. I didn't want to record today. I didn't want to record today. I didn't want to make a podcast today because I just didn't have anything interesting to say. I am feeling absolutely uninspired and unmotivated with the podcast, with my personal weight journey at the moment, and just with life in general. Um, I don't think, I know that it's not like depression or anxiety speaking, I'm just kind of in a burnt out place at the moment and it's coming from, I had shared last week how, you know, Frank had been out of town and I was solo parenting and it was just, it was a lot going on and I haven't really had time to recharge my batteries and take a break from that. Over the weekend, um, I really didn't get a chance to recharge either and it was a fun weekend. So it was my daughter's very first cheer competition weekend and it was Saturday and Sunday and it's intense right it's it's high energy it's overstimulating it's loud there's a lot of things going on you're you know it it just for an introverted person it can be very um, battery draining even though I love the environment I like the noise I like the excitement her and I both have fallen in love with the sport and I just love it for her but I didn't have time for me to really like, you know, recharge and regroup and really collect my thoughts and everything like that. So this week started and I was like, oh my God, I don't even have topics prepared for the podcast. I don't know what I'm going to say. I looked at, I always have like an ongoing list of topics and ideas that I, that I just, I kind of keep this little library as I think of things. And even going through that, I'm like, no, I I don't want to talk about these things. It's hard for me to talk about things on the podcast if I'm not currently going through that or like in that headspace, if that makes sense. And so I'm not feeling inspired. It's really hard to like put that peppy motivating voice on and you might hear my voice. I'm tired. I'm worn down. I'm burnt out. But I know that someone else needs to hear this. And that's what actually motivated me to, you know, move forward and get this episode recorded today. Because I know that, you know, we're in the middle of winter. I had talked last week about the art of slowing down in winter. But a lot of people are feeling that, you know, winter time kind of just depression, slow down, not really feeling it. Everybody's kind of lost the glimmer and the and the hope that was the new year because we're now in the thick of the year. We're moving full steam ahead and someone else needs to hear this, that it's completely normal to feel absolutely and utterly uninspired and unmotivated. We as humans are not intended to be motivated all of the time. So I think that... You know, the number one thing you have to do, and I'm just really going to be talking off the cuff. I don't really have notes prepared for today because, again, I'm uninspired. So we're going to, while feeling uninspired, we're going to talk about being uninspired. And my hope is that this will help me and help you as well because a lot of times when we push ourselves to do something that we really don't feel like doing, that starts to bring back some of our motivation. So, um, yeah. And I feel like I can't breathe. Like, I don't know what it is. I just, I feel like I can't get a breath. So I'm going to pause for just a second because I need to breathe. And I think I need to just slow down. I always feel like I have to talk fast. Um, It's a trauma response, to be quite frank with you. (laughs) I have a hard time... um, 
I often have felt that I wasn't being heard and my voice wasn't being heard and that if I didn't speak fast and get out what I needed to say, that I would lose my window of opportunity for someone to care and to listen to what I was saying. So I am acknowledging that. That is completely a trauma response. I need to slow down so I can breathe and I can get everything out. You're not going anywhere. I got I, You got me in your headphones. You know, go and do something while you're listening. I That's what I love about podcasting is you can multitask. You can drive. You can do the dishes. You can go for a walk. You can sit in the bed and read a book or watch it. Like I just, I love podcasts for that reason. So I'm going to just remind myself to slow down. I think that's why I'm having a hard time catching my breath. Okay. Number one thing when we're feeling uninspired is to acknowledge the lull, acknowledge the, the, the valley, so to speak, that you're in. Acknowledge that it is absolutely completely normal to feel uninspired at times. You know, especially when we relate it back to weight loss, because I had mentioned I'm not feeling inspired on my weight loss journey right now either. Weight loss is a journey that is inherently full of ups and downs, literally, right? <laughs> like it's literally full of ups and downs. It's metaphorically full of ups and downs. And we are not going to feel motivated or inspired all of the time. Motivation is great to get you started, but it will not carry you to the end. It's not going to carry you across the finish line. So just, you know, acknowledging that you're uninspired and admitting that to yourself. Because sometimes we run away from the truth because we don't want to face it. We don't want to admit that we're feeling uninspired, even though our output, our actions are not of someone who would be, you know, motivated or inspired, right? Which is where I'm at as well. Like I was willing to just throw the towel in this morning and be like, I'm not recording shit. I don't want to do this. Nobody wants to hear anything depressing. Nobody wants to hear your negativity. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say unless it's inspiring and motivating. And I don't know, maybe that's true for some people that listen, but maybe for most of you, it's good for you to hear all of the, all of the good and the bad and the in-between. And I was like, I'm just going to press record. And I think another thing, sidebar, that's been messing with my inspiration with the podcast is I'm having so many tech issues. Like I have two computers. One is like my main desktop, like big, huge screen. I also have a Chromebook that I will carry around the house because then that way I can pick up where I left off with my documents and things like that. And all of my computers are on their last leg. Then was it last week? I went to go plug in my, my big mamma jamma microphone and the cord that connects it is completely bent. It won't let me turn it on having issues with my recording software. And so it's like, I just felt like the universe is conspiring against me and I can't get my content created. And that negative inner fat bitch voice starts telling you, well, that's because no one wants to hear from you. No one gives a shit about this podcast. So that's why all of your things are breaking. That's why, you know, you're not able to record anything or it's, it's, it's extra hard to get things done right now negative voice tells me those things. And I'm like, wait a second, is that really true? No, you know, but you start hearing that and you start creating that story where I'm like, you know, my numbers are down. No one gives a shit what I have to say. Is anyone really listening to this podcast? Is it really making an impact? Like, is there a point to this anymore? And I have to say, I don't really, whether, <laughs> Whether anyone's listening or not, which I know people are, because I see the numbers, obviously, but even if they're not, or it's not the numbers that you want to have, this podcast also does something for me. And I knew that if I just got on here and press record and I'm going to be all over the place and I'm probably not going to make sense and I don't have like a, a structured outline, it's okay. It's okay because... Maybe it's going to help you, but I also know it's going to help me too, because it's going to give me that extra dose of, you know, motivation to now go and do the next thing. So acknowledging that it's normal to feel this way, we are not intended to be motivated and inspired all of the time. Motivation ebbs 
and flows. It comes and it goes. And like I said before, it can get us started, right? But it cannot take us through the whole journey because we're going to have those ups and downs. And so that leads me to my next point, which is act as if you are motivated. Like, what? How do I do that if I'm not motivated? Well, fake it till you make it, honey. That's that's it. You got to fake it till you make it. I didn't want to get on here today, but I said, maybe that's the topic. Like, like that's the sentence. I'm uninspired. That's the, that's the episode. You know, it is, this podcast is a reflection of my real life, things that I've gone through, things that I'm going through, how I've overcome them so that I can, you know, lose that emotional weight that's holding me back and learn to create the irresistible life that I crave and deserve. And when I'm not feeling, you know, in my high energy Amy version, I can't get on here and fake the funk. I can't get on here like, all right, here's what we're gonna do, y'all. We're gonna like you hear it in my voice. You can hear the burnout and the exhaustion in my voice. I can't fake that. I can't fake the excitement. So when we talk about fake it till you make it, what I mean by that is, you know, I'm not going to get on here with a fake motivating voice and like high, if I'm high energy, I'm high energy because I'm just that way because I'm feeling that way. But you have to act like you're motivated and that means doing things that motivated people would do. A motivated person would get their ass up, keep their commitment and do what they got to do. And one of my commitments is getting this podcast done. And I may not feel like doing it, but I'm going to act as if I am someone who's motivated. The other thing I always recommend when you're in a funk with yourself, right? And it's like, you know, you don't feel like putting on makeup or you don't feel like doing your hair. Or you don't feel like getting dressed and leaving the house. It's like, all right, fine. But like, like you can see me if you're watching, if the video even comes out, which I don't even know if it will, because it's like, choppy 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 as I'm watching the preview and it's so annoying but if the video comes out you can see I'm I'm not really wearing you know my full face glam makeup today but when you're not feeling yourself it's like okay get your ass in the shower okay and when you get out of the shower have no expectations just put your robe on and then sit back in the bed but then once you get out of the shower, a lot of times we're now motivated to put some clothes on, okay? And then when we see ourselves in clothes, we're like, well, I don't look complete. I need to put my face on, right? So maybe that's just your skincare routine. Cool. Now you're like, well, my face is looking good. I need to put my, my, my glam face on, right? And so it's like that domino effect where you're acting as if you're motivated because now it's actually causing is cause and effect right it's causing you to take the next step and the next step and the next step so that's what I mean by that is you have to act as though you feel motivated and that can be so hard when you just want to curl up in a ball go and hibernate and just escape the world okay another thing for me that I find is very helpful so when I start to get unmotivated, uninspired, and I kind of fall off the wagon, so to speak, it's because I stop putting it in my face. <laughs> You're like, what? I stopped putting it in my face. This is not, it's not what you think. What that means is I stop putting my goals in my face. When you stop looking the number in the eye, whether it's getting on the scale, whipping out your why, whipping out your, you know, your, your goals. I have a sheet for, um, that has all my goals. I list out by the month, things I want to accomplish week by week, like my to-do list, all of that. When I stop opening that document every single morning before I open the email, the Slack messages, and all the wants and needs of all, everybody else in the world, okay? Because that's where all this burnout comes from. When you stop putting it in your face, you lose sight of where you're going. And for me, that document is my 
map to where I want to go. That is my map to success. And something about seeing it every, even though I know what's on there, it's not like the goals have changed from yesterday, but every single day when you put that thing in your face or you write down your goals every single day, even though they're the same goals that were on there yesterday, it mentally does something to keep you motivated on a subconscious level. It gets up in there um, and it does something. And so when you stop putting it in your face, you distance yourself from reality. You distance yourself from what you want. And then you allow life circumstances to cloud your judgment. You allow life circumstances to take you away from what you want. Because life is going to life. Like, you know, if, if there's nothing else you've learned here on this podcast, life is going to life. Things are going to happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And we cannot take our eye off the ball for so long that we lose sight of what we want. So you got to put that shit in your face. Whether it is a document, like I'm talking, so I have a document that has all of my, um, like my annual goals, it's like, and then I break it down by month of things that I want to do, see, accomplish, what have you. And then every month I have a breakdown of week by week. So I have like my podcast episodes. I have the weight loss goals. I have, you know, life goals, things I want to accomplish, what, blah, 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 blah. I have different categories. And one thing I promise myself to do is every single morning, open it up, look at it. You may not need to do anything, but you need to look at it and keep it top of mind. When things are no longer top of mind, you forget. We go into, holy shit, how did I get here mode? <sighs> Same thing with the scale. Um, a lot of people say not to weigh in every single day. Personally, I weigh in every single morning because I can handle it. I am at a place where I can emotionally handle what it's going to spit back at me because I've done the work. If you haven't done that work yet, that's another conversation. But I do get on the scale every single day as a way to keep it in my face. Because what happens is you skip a week, then you skip two weeks, then you skip a month because you're so scared to see what's on the scale. And next thing you know, you've put back on, you put 10, 20 pounds back on because you took it out of your face. You have to keep it in your face, whatever your goals are. Okay. So, and there's no excuse, right? This document that I'm talking about, it's on my Google Docs. So I can open it on my phone, my tablet, my computers. Anywhere I have access, I can pull that document up. There's zero excuses, but I will find myself not opening it. Just wanting to zone out, wanting to like protect myself and just be like in this little bubble and not have to deal with real world and not have to deal with adulting and not have to deal with things. But we have to, we have to deal with those things because if we don't, it all piles up and it gets to be too much. And that's when we get overwhelmed. The other thing is to change your environment. Move something around in your room. Clean up your room. Organize something. Move the couch. Move the furniture. Move your desk. Do something to change your environment because that will change your state of being. Or change your state of being, which means... Get your ass up from the desk and go for a walk for five minutes. Go walk around the block. Go walk around the office, wherever you're at. Go for a drive in your car. Do not underestimate the peace <laughs> that sitting in your car, whether you're sitting in your car, just watching a Lifetime movie or watching YouTube or whether you're driving around in your car, listening to music or a podcast, do not underestimate the peace that that will bring. I just find that so peaceful. And that means when you're by yourself, not with anybody else in the car. I'm over here 
looking at my office going, oh girl, no. Like, this is part of the problem. My office has been a mess since the summer. Literally since the summertime. We had family come in and we turned the office into a bedroom. And, you know, I've put the mattresses away. That's been put away. We've cleaned the linens. We've done all of that. But all the linens that I that were in here are still sitting on the couch, folded up. <laughs> then, um... You know, we had Chewy in here when the babysitter was here one night with the big crate. That's still sitting in here. Boxes are still sitting in here. From Like, it's just things that have happened over the last few months that just got, this started becoming like the catch-all room and things just got shoved around. And as a result, I've been meaning to get the kids a new desk, like an art and craft desk in this room since school started. We're now in February. That has many purposes for me. It, it's good for them to do their art and crafts. It gives them a space to do it. They can do that in here in the afternoons while I'm working, especially now that Javi's not napping. It gives him an outlet. Kat can come in here and do her homework. So I finally got the desk that I've been eyeing. We're going to put it together, put it in here. They're going to have their little space. Put the dog crate away. Put the linens away. And get your shit together, okay? Like, get your shit together. Get off your ass and get some work done, okay? Like, what are we, why are we not doing this stuff? Like, we are allowing life circumstances, and and let's be real, life can be very heavy, can be very stressful, <laughs> obviously. But like, we're over here allowing this stuff to weigh us down and keep us from what we really want. And I'm sick of it. Like, I'm sick of my own shit quite frankly. Like, I'm sick of my own shit. I'm sick of feeling uninspired. I'm sick of not feeling motivated. I'm sick of telling myself the, sa the same shit being on my to-do list for a month, two months, three months. I'm done. I'm so over it. And again, who's standing in your way? You are. You are the person sitting there, standing in your way, not allowing yourself to be great. It's not your kids, it's not your job, it's not your business, it's not your husband, it's not your friends, it's not your parents. It's you, boo. You are stopping you from being great. So get the hell out of your own way, do what you need to do, and get shit done. Like, I think about, there are people in this world that don't have the privilege and the luxury of complaining about the shit we complain about. Can you imagine having your life taken from you, losing someone you love, like all this like horrible, crazy stuff that we're all terrified of and how quickly it can all happen. So you are sitting there with the privilege of being able to break through the plateaus, break through your bullshit and get out of your way. Put the Christmas shit in the attic, put the linens in the closet, put the dog crate back in the attic, fold it up, put it away. I'm talking to myself right now, okay? <laughs> like, put it up. Change your environment. When your environment is chaotic, your brain will be chaotic. And that's how my office has been. And I am, I'm over it. I'm over it. So things in your house that are all over the place, the chaos, the stuff, like that manifest into your emotional mental state. If your house looks chaotic, if your house is a disaster, I guarantee you feel like a disaster too. So change your environment, change your state. And I have to recognize, and I know this about myself, and I have to always remind myself, because, and maybe this category could be like giving yourself grace about what some of your like weaknesses are, I guess. But for me, a quote unquote weakness that I have is I am someone who becomes extremely overstimulated very easily. If too many people are trying to talk to me, you know, like people are having, I'm having three different conversations with people. The kids are asking me for something. My phone is pinging and dinging. I can't stand it. I become so overstimulated that the very like most simple task, I will just sit there and try to do the task and I can't accomplish it because I'm my brain cannot 
go at that frequency. And so when you have things about yourself that you know like that, again, it goes back to knowing, forming a relationship with yourself so that you get to know yourself where you're strong and where you're weak. I am someone who's going to get extremely overly st- overstimulated very easily. Why is it important to know that? Well, it's important for a lot of reasons. Important for a lot of reasons. I know that, you know, after a weekend of cheer competition, you've got teenage girls, preteen girls. It's loud. There's a ton of them. There's music. It's in a, you know, a convention center. So it, it echoes and bounces off the walls. The energy is super high, which at the same time, I love that. I think it's really cool. But I also know I'm going to crash and burn. Like... By Sunday night, when we got home, we were all sitting on the couch watching a show or something. I couldn't keep my eyes open. Like, I know that I am absolutely going to crash and burn. You know, whether it's going to a conference, I know when I get back from any vacation, conference, social event, I need some time built into my schedule to just, like, decompress I need, and, and it was crazy because Catalina's a very much, the, she's the same as me. She um, is, is probably introverted as well. So she, and remember when we talk intro extroverted, we're not talking about shy and outgoing. We're talking about how you gain energy. I gain my energy by then going back, like going back in my little cave, hibernating, reading a book, being on the internet, watching movies, being alone, driving my car, whatever. And then when I'm ready, when I'm good and ready, I'm going to come back out into the world the social world where a social person just has to ha- like they just have to have someone to talk to or they have to be around people and that's my son <laughs> like we all got home i'm just on my phone frank's on his phone she's on her tablet and javi is just a million miles a minute bouncing off the wall. He wants to play games with us. He wants to do this. He wants to do that. And I'm like, bro, can you just have some quiet playtime by yourself? Like we all need that right now. And the more he wanted to play and talk and hang out and bounce off the walls, it was driving me insane. But that's, I guess, that's his way of coping. My way of coping is leave me the hell alone. And when I'm good and ready, I will come out of my cave. But when you have kids, it's not that easy. We don't get to do that. (laughs) So it can be very overwhelming and stressful. But know things about yourself, right? I am easily overstimulated. Like even Frank, I'm like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, just leave me alone. Like, I was just coming out of the convention center. I'm not mad. I'm not angry. I just want to be left alone for a minute so I can like regroup my thoughts and like, you know, and, and for people to understand that doesn't mean like I had a great time. Like I love, I, I love the environment. I think cheer is such an amazing sport for my daughter. Like I like the energy. I like the confidence boosting. It's empowering. It's just such a great team sport where you know, she's learning that she, she even said, I can't let my team down. I have to be there. And I was like, yes. I was like, that is one of the reasons I put her in this sport is to learn how to be a team player, to learn how to, you know, overcome your fear. Like at first she was scared to get on the mat in front of this crowd. And she was like, that wasn't so bad. I loved it. I'm like, yes. So Even still, even when you go and do things you love, you need time to retreat and go back into yourself and recharge your battery. Like my battery was on red. We were on 5%. The light had dimmed. You know, on your phone, when the light dims at 5%, you're like, girl, my, my brain was at 5%. The light had dimmed out. Leave me alone and plug me in. Okay. So understand that about yourself. And then I want you to also look at like the long term effects of it burnout, exhaustion. Are you in one of those phases right now? Like you have to look at that as well, because if you're feeling extreme burnout, it's going to be very hard to even act as if you're motivated. And, you know, full disclosure, if that's going on, if it's depression, anxiety, full blown burnout, you need to seek medical help. You need, you need to have medical help to get you through those, those things. And so, 
Yeah. Um, I can't believe it's been 30 minutes of me talking about this. For someone that was uninspired, here we are. <laughs> and we got it done. And I feel really good about that. And even though this may have been all over the place, I'm sure that there is a nugget or two that you can pull from this episode to help you in whatever it is you're going through. So yeah, um, I'm going to end it on that note because we have more things we have to get done. And so if this episode was helpful, you can go over to Apple and leave a rating and review. I do recommend listening to the podcast over on Amazon Music. The Amazon Music app is a fantastic way to subscribe and get notifications for new episodes. Plus, if you are an Amazon Prime member, that app is completely free. It's ad-free. There's tons of songs on there. There's tons of podcasts on there. And if you're not an Amazon Prime member, you can sign up for a 30-day free trial using my link in the show notes. So we're going to go ahead and end it on there. I will catch you over on Instagram. You can follow me at Irresistible Icing. Until next time, stay irresistible. Bye, guys.